Nobody goes to work for the sake of a company. They go to work to fulfill their highest values. And if they can see that their job duties are helping them do it, they're engaged and inspired and productive and making money. I want to talk today about the credible value of values. I've been involved in personal development, human behavior since 1972, 73. And out of all the things that I've been blessed to explore and study in that field, human values became the most significant. And it was a shocking to find out that when you started looking at the literature, very few books have been written on the field. And yet I found it one of the most significant aspects of human development. That's one of the reasons I wrote the Values Factor book, to try to fill in gaps that weren't being revealed. Your values determine what you perceive, what you decide to do, and how you act in life. Stop and think about that. How you perceive, what you perceive, what you decide to do, and how you act is based on your values. Your values filter your sensory reality and selectively bias information <clears throat> according to the hierarchy of what's most important to least important in your life. Your decisions are based on what you believe will give the greatest advantage over disadvantage. <clears throat> and your actions will be most consistent with what you value most. So therefore, the things that are really, really most important to you, uh, it's wise to know. So often, if, if I go and ask somebody, you know, how many would love to be financially independent? Everybody puts their hand up. And I ask them, how many of you are financially independent? The hands go down. How many would love to have this soulmate relationship? All the hands go up that are single, some that are even married. <laughs> um, and then I ask them, how many feel you have that? And the hands go down. <clears throat> well, many of them. So many times people have unrealistic expectations, sometimes delusions and fantasies about what's important to them and not really looking at what actually is. So I found out, and some people say they want to have a goal, they have goals that they want to accomplish, and then they don't get around to doing them. And they give up on them, or they don't act on them, or they, and they think they sabotage, they think they're, they don't have discipline, they think there's something wrong with them, they beat themselves up. And what I found is many times they have injected and inculcated other people's values they put on a pedestal and envied, pedestal and envied, and they didn't really honor what was important to them. And so they beat themselves up trying to live in other people's values, trying to conform and fit in instead of stand out and be unique. So I found this very, very significant and very crucial to maximize our awareness and potential in life, which is what I've been dedicated to. And in the program that I present called the Breakthrough Experience, which I present quite often, weekly almost, I find many times people say they want to do something, but their actions don't demonstrate it. And your actions speak louder than your words. And I see people say, I want to do this, I want to do that, but then I just keep not doing it. I keep having sabotaging, I keep doing it. No, they don't know what their values are. One of the reasons I put on my drdmartini.com website as a complimentary value determination process is because it's just millions of people out there that are wandering around thinking what's important to them is important to them when it's not. And they, they're setting goals that aren't really theirs. And then they're wondering why they're not fulfilled and they're wondering why they're not to getting anywhere. I would say depression is a comparison of your current reality to a fantasy about how it's supposed to be. And many people have fantasies that they're going to do something that's not really valuable to them. I mean, I'm, I'm not, this is amazing. I mean, this is like 99% of the population have some degree of this. So I want to spend a moment doing that, talking about that. And I know that some of you have listened to me do many talks, and some of you may be new, but for those of you who've heard it, it's not unwise to hear it again. Every human being lives by a set of priorities, a set of values, things that are most important to least important in their life. And that set of values is unique to them. And therefore, trying to copy somebody else is automatically going to diminish your potential. And you're automatically going to be living in competition, being second at being somebody else instead of being first at being you. There's no competition to you. There's competition to people similar to you, maybe, but not you. So you have a hierarchy of values, a set of values, a set of priorities that are unique. 
Now that set of values does change over your life. You know, when you're teenagers and kids and young children you, and adults, there are different priorities at the time. And there's a Maslow's kind of a, a hierarchy that occurs over life if you want to have fulfillment in life. And there's survival and there's self-actualizing kind of layers of it. But whatever's most important to you at any one moment in time, if you know what that is and you structure your life to fulfill that, you excel. Anytime you set a goal that is aligned with your highest value, you are spontaneously inspired to act. You have the highest probability of achieving it. Your self-worth goes up when you live by highest values. Your self-worth goes down when you live by lower values. You are more, in a sense, capable of enduring whatever challenges you face in the pursuit of it. In fact, you will be willing to embrace both pain and pleasure, challenge and support in the pursuit of it when it's highest. Because it's so important that when the why is big enough, at highest values like the why, when the why is big enough, the house take care of themselves. And your highest value is what you filter your perception, decisions, and actions by. And your highest value has been defined as the telos by the ancient Greeks, which is the end in mind, which is the purpose, which is your mission. So when people are looking for their mission and purpose, it's right there in the highest value. Whatever is highest on your value is what you're going to excel at. That's where you're most inspired, most spontaneously active. That's where you're going to excel. That's where you're going to be you know, fulfilled most, most meaningful. Because you're doing something you really love to do and because you're willing to embrace pain and pleasure in the pursuit of it, you're more objective, more balanced, more resilient, more adaptable, and less impulsive. And because you tend to achieve it, you're disciplined, reliable, and focused in that area and you achieve it, you tend to expand your horizons and can continue to grow and wake up your natural leader and open the doors for for really expanded opportunities, awareness, decisions, actions, you play in a bigger field of possibility. Now, they, this if you're not trying to live by your highest values and you're comparing yourself to other people and you go, ooh, they're, they're more successful, they're more intelligent or they're more wealthy or they're more uh, savvy in business or they're more got a better relationship, or they're more socially connected or they're more physically fit or more spiritually aware. The moment you compare yourself to somebody else and put them on a pedestal and exaggerate them and minimize you and think they have something you don't and you're too humble to admit what you see in them is inside you, you automatically will inject some of their values. Values go in society from those who have the most power to those of least power perceptually. So the second you minimize yourself to somebody, you're gonna to tend to inject their values. And the moment you inject some of their values, you cloud the clarity of your own values. And then you feel uncertain. And the more uncertain you feel, the more you brain offload decisions back to those people that you give power to. Giving your power away, some people call it. And you also sometimes compare yourself to other people and feel cocky and proud. And you look down on them and you think, well, they're, they've got their values all screwed up and um, they don't know what's really important. And then you project your values onto them because values go from power down to least power. So if you look down to some, you project your values on them, try to get them to live in your values. When you try to get others to live in your values, you have futility because they're not going to do it. They can't sustain it. And when you try to live in other people's values, you're not going to be able to sustain it. You might be able to do it temporarily while you're in fatuid, but that wears off. And then hedonic adaptation sets in and you start to go back and you want your own life back. And you have a natural inclination to want to be authentic. You want to be loved and appreciated for who you are. So anytime you aren't living by your highest values, what your life and identity revolves around, and you try to live by other people's values, you automatically cloud that confuse that, cause internal conflict, and a lot of psychological conditions emerge out of that internal conflict between what you think you should be doing, ought to be doing, supposed to be doing, need to be doing, have to be doing, got to be doing, must do from other people's expectations and values instead of from what your own calling is indicating. The question is, knowing what your highest value is is crucial. And then giving yourself permission to live according to that. And then structuring your life by priority and doing the highest priority things that serve the greatest number of people that compensate, compensate you financially, remunerate you financially for doing it because you're serving a need and solving a problem and feeling a value in other people's lives. And you're doing something that's meaningful 
Because as you know, when you're doing something that meets a difference, makes a difference in other people's lives and matches your highest value, you have the most fulfillment. When you do, you earn the income to delegate to lower priority things and liberate yourself from things that depreciate you. Because anytime you're doing low priority things, you devalue yourself. Anytime you do low priority things, the blood glucose and oxygen goes into the amygdala, the subcortical area of the brain that's a desire center. And the desire center is like an animal center that wants to avoid predator and seek prey. So the second you're not fulfilled and you're not fulfilling the highest values, which wakes up your executive center, and wakes up inspired vision and strategic planning and objective focus and, and uh, you know, action steps and create governance and mastery, you're living in that amygdala where you're basically impulsive for, for pleasure, immediate gratification and pain and instinct away from anything that might challenge you. So you want an easy life and you don't really go out and make the big difference. So if you're not filling your day with high priority actions that inspire you, your day's gonna fill up with low priority distractions that don't. If you don't fill your day with inspiring ideas and challenges that inspire you, you're gonna keep getting challenges that you don't want. If you're gonna get challenges in life, you might as well fill it with challenges that inspire you that you wanna make a difference in. Filling people's needs is one of the best ones, greatest ones. So when we're not living by our highest values and we go into our amygdala and we want immediate gratification, we search for a quick fix. And that costs us in business. There's not long-term relation. It costs us in money because we buy consumables that appreciate. It costs us in relationships because we want support without challenge. We want to fix. We want a fantasy. We want to meet gratification. We want our animal nature going on, a little passion instead of our mission. When it's in social life, again, we, we get abrupt and we don't think long-term and the impact we have. All areas of our life are impacted by when we live by our highest values. But what are values and where do they come from? Well, values come originally from our most primitive nature, believe it or not. The second the sperm and the egg unite and it makes a zygote, which is the first cell that forms from the two haploid things into a diploid genetically. And we start dividing the cells, epigenetics and genetics start working together. And everything that that cell or those multiple cells experience all the way to birth over the next nine months that has been pleasurable or painful to the cells, supportive or challenging the cells, has been accumulated in responses and feedback systems that epigenetically is tagged and uh, affects our physiology. And anything that is supported our values, we label positive and good morally out of, out of our ignorance. <clears throat> Because in truth, there is no one-sided anything, but we think it is because we think it's supporting us. Anything that we think is challenging us, we label bad. And we get this artificial morality thing that comes in that supports us for things that support us and things that we want to avoid. And we get kind of a fantasy and a nightmare out of all the experiences in our life. And this is all stored in what I call the subconscious mind and most of the time runs us. But anytime we're we see something that supports us and we become drawn to it and impulsively towards it and get infatuated with it and seek it, um, we fear its loss. And anytime we get something that challenges us, that we resent, that we want to run away from, that frightens us, that causes pain or whatever, we have a fear of it coming near us. And so, and the more we polarize our perception and label something as black or white or good or bad, morally, we create a hypocrisy of a life because we're trying to create a one-sided life of trying to avoid something and get, get one side. Imagine trying to get rid of half of yourself and trying to love yourself. It's not going to happen. Or trying to get rid of half of somebody else and so you, you can't love them. They're both sided. If you try to get one side of that life, you're not going to get anywhere. So your values are stemming right from the beginning on every experience you have that's imbalanced. It's polarizing you into a support and challenge side and then creating something that you want to seek and want to avoid. And as you go through life, this is impacting your decisions. Your decisions are based on every past experience that you label positive or negative. Now, in the breakthrough experience that I teach every week, I show people that as long as they're polarized in their perceptions, their animal nature, their amygdala, their subconscious is going to keep running their life. And they're going to be an automaton reacting, brain offloading, looking for heroes, external heroes conforming and fitting in, not wanting to stand out, afraid of losing the, the herd and not being part of the herd, afraid of rejection. And, and live in a disempowered life. But these, these judgments we have 
Anytime we're in fatu with something, we're too humble to admit what we see in them is inside us. That's a void inside. That's a missing piece. That's a disowned part. We're too humble to admit we have that. The truth is we have it. We have what we see in other people, but we're too humble to admit it. Or we have what we see in other people we look down on, but we're too proud to admit it. And anything we're too proud or too humble to admit we have becomes a disowned part. And those disowned parts are incomplete and they're not truly us. It's inauthentic us. And we want to be authentic. We want to be loved for who we are. So we got to go put those parts back. We got to own those parts. In the breakthrough experience, I show people how to own the parts they've been disowning, the hero side, the villain side, the saint, the sinner, both sides of their life, because they're not going to love themselves until they love both sides. I went through a dictionary many years ago and looked at all the possible traits of human being, positive and negative traits, and I found I had every one of them. Nothing was missing. I'm kind, I'm cruel, I'm nice, I'm mean, I'm positive, negative, I'm supportive and challenging. I'm all, all over the place, depending on the situation. I can be nice as a pussycat, I can be mean as a tiger. And I don't need to get rid of any. You don't need to get rid of any part of yourself. You want to be able to love yourself for all of it. And all of it is going to have a purpose. In the breakthrough experience, I show when somebody's mean to you, how that's actually serving you. When somebody's nice to you, how it's also disserving you. And the meanness has benefits and drawbacks, and the niceness has benefits and drawbacks. And if you can see both sides, the external world doesn't run your life. But if you evaluate and you polarize instead of synthesize and put yourself in the highest values where you're objective, where you see both sides, you're going to have the world outside you run your life instead of the you run your life. That's what the purpose of the breakthrough experience is to help people get their life back because they've given it away and disempowered themselves many times because they are judging instead of loving. There's strife inside them, an internal conflict inside themselves because they're trying to get others to live in their values. They're trying to get themselves to live in other people's values and still live in their own values. The reason I wrote the book, The Values Factor, is because I want people to be able to be inspired by their life and they can't be inspired by their life trying to be somebody they're not. As long as they're too proud or too humble to admit what they see in other people inside themselves, they're going to live inauthentically. They're going to be projecting or injecting values. And as a result of that, they're going to be futile having futility because you can't get other people living your values. You can't live in other people's values. So it's futility. And you're going to be living in fear because you're going to be fearing the loss of the things you infatuate and fearing the gains of the things you resent. So you're going to be living in fear. You're going to be disempowering yourself, comparing yourself to other people. And it doesn't work. What works is actually comparing your own daily actions to your own highest value. How effective are you at living by your highest value? That's the key. That's why I want you to go online and do the value determination process, determine what really, what your life demonstrates it, how you fill your space the most, what you spend your time on the most, what is it that energizes you the most, what is it you spend your money on the most, what is it that you're actually disciplined, reliable, and focused on, where is your highest degree of order and organization in life, what do you think about, visualize, and talk to yourself about most, about how you want your life that really shows evidence of coming true, what are you conversing with other people about most, what do you keep bringing the conversations to? What inspires you the most? What is it that you have as goals that you are pursuing and you are not stopping and you're getting them? And what is it you love reading about, learning about, listening to? Go online, take advantage of that, or come to the Breakthrough Experience and let me demonstrate it and show it to you and help you define it. Because not knowing what it is that's really most important to you, not knowing what you're really committed to, not knowing what your mission is, not knowing what your identity revolves around, not knowing where you're going to excel, not knowing where you're going to learn the most, not knowing what drives and gives you vast amounts of energy, not knowing who you are is, is insanity, really. And I'm amazed at how many people on the planet just don't take the time to, to do it. They, they, they do more planning on their vacation than they do on their own mastery. And it's insane. A vacation is a transient escape. Your life is your mission, it's your mastery. And that's important. That's why I tell people come to the breakthrough experience because if they don't, they're missing out on a gold mine of opportunity to start the trajectory, a new trajectory on authenticity about who they really are. And it's going to be based on the values. I'm certain about that. I've been doing this 48 years next month. And I'm, I'm certain that that is one of the key elements. See, when you want to learn something, if it's not linked to your highest values, you're not going to absorb it as much. And kids are in school going through a class. They can't see helping them fulfill what's important to them. It's an autocratic situation. They put labels on defiant disorders and attention deficit disorders. And they got kids labeled because the teacher doesn't know how to communicate in the kids' values. The kids don't see how the curriculum is going to help them fulfill what they, what they really value. They feel frustrated. They feel forced to do it. They're there for social purposes. 
That's insanity. If you can just educate the teachers and educate the principals and educate the friggin' educational system, how important it is to find out the unique individual value of that child and find out how to communicate what you want to teach to that child's values and let them excel in the things that they value. Wow. You wake up genius because when kids are doing what they love doing, they pursue challenges that inspire them and they wake up their capacities. Genius and innovation is when you live by your highest values. I guarantee you. I watched it. I've been studying geniuses and great achievers for years. And your business, nobody goes to, sake, goes to work for the sake of a company. They go to work to fulfill their highest values. And if they can see that their job duties are helping them do it, they're engaged and inspired and productive and make you money. But if they don't, then that's insanity because you're going to be you're going to be wanting to escape on a break, take a long break, cheat on your time, take a vacation, get a, an escape, go on, on on holidays and and want to retire and get away from that friggin' job. Anytime you have somebody that feels like they've got to go to work and it's that job they work at, they're not engaged. What kind of life is a Monday morning blue, one Wednesday hump day? Thank God it's Friday weekend and weekend stuff. That's insanity. And the same thing in, in finance. If you don't value wealth building, you'll keep buying consumables that depreciate in value and living by carousel for other people's brands and never build a brand around yourself. And in relationship, people want to be loved for who they are and who they are is an expression of their highest values. And if you can't communicate your values, highest values in terms of their highest values, they're not going to feel loved and you're not going to feel loved. And there's a science to that, which I explained in the breakthrough experience. There's a science on how to communicate people's values. There's a science on how to shift values so you can actually build your wealth in life. There's a science on how to link values so you can be inspired at work. There's a science of how to learn anything based on your values. And that's worth knowing that. It's insane not to know how to use that. The same thing socially. If you want to live and be a leader and make a difference and have influence, it's not going to happen if you're living by the subordination of a culture, following a culture. It's about building a culture. And that only occurs when you're congruent and living by your highest values and prioritizing your life and living and delegating things and engaging and getting other people engaged in some cause inspired. Margaret Mead said that the only time you ever make a difference in the world is when a small group of people are inspired by some vision, make the difference. And you're capable of making a difference. It's inside you, it's innate, it's waiting to come to the surface. But to the degree that you're congruent with your highest values, it will surface. Until then, it's not going to. And you're gonna keep blaming it. Anytime you look for sources outside you for a problem and outside for a solution, you disempowered yourself because you're extrinsically run, which is the amygdala, which is the animal nature, instead of the intrinsic calling. I said on the secret 15 years ago now, 14 years ago, when the voice and the vision on the inside is louder than all opinions on the outside, you begin to master your life. It's the inside job, not the external job. It's not every, and nothing, we, we never have any, it's nothing out there in the world that's affecting us. It's our perception, decisions, and actions, which is value-driven. And the same thing with our health. If we're not living congruently, our physiology is going to create symptoms through the autonomic and epigenetic expression in cells and protein manufacturing in the genome. It's going to great, it's going to translate into symptoms to let you know you're being inauthentic. In fact, all seven areas of your life, even your spiritual quests, if you're not inspired on a daily basis, full of energy, then somehow you're not living authentically and not inspired by a service to the world and being something and contributing something that means something to you that you get a win out of. And to not structure your life by your values is, is insane, really. And if you, you, you won't hear me talk on any seminar around the world, and I do a lot of them. I've done over 300 already this year, even during Corona, 300 presentations now and webinars and stuff. And in the process of doing that, you won't hear any talk I do that won't mention values. So the incredible value of values is realizing that that's the core essence of your existence. And that's why I want people to to know and go get the book, The Values Factor, go read that thing about 10 times and really get it. Come to the breakthrough experience and actually learn how to actually do it and learn how to structure your life around what's really important to you because nobody's gonna get up in the morning and dedicate their life to you and like, unless it's you. You don't have a genie out there that's rubbing a lamp and making your wishes come true. It's you, it's you prioritizing action. You're not gonna stay consistent, persistent on some objective if it's not really important to you. I've been, I've been teaching for eight years next month, and uh, I do it every single day. Nobody has to remind me to do it. If you have to be reminded and motivated externally, extrinsically to get what you want done in life, you are not on mission. There's no motivation needed for somebody who's inspired by a mission. Nobody has to tell you what to do when it's really important to you. When those whys are big enough, the house take care of themselves. You figure out the strategy. 
You always have a strategy for what's most important, but many times you don't honor what's most important because you're afraid of, of, of being rejected and not fitting in and not being, I mean, so many people are trapped. The political arena and landscape today is insane. They're afraid, they're, they're, they're polarizing themselves because they're not willing to be themselves. They, 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 they allow external sensations to distract them from their missions. Your mission is where your fulfillment path is. And whether that's raising a beautiful family, whether that's raising a, a, a corporation, whether that's doing something socially to cause, whether that's doing yoga on the beaches or climbing mountains or uh, some spiritual quest or feeding the hunger, I don't know what it is. Whatever it is, it's deeply meaningful to you that's coming from your voids, your deepest voids. I, I, was, I had uh, speech impediments. I was told I would never read, I would never write, I'd never communicate, never mount thing, never go very far in life. My voids were there as a child, the perfect voids for what I do today. All the voids that you've had in your life, all the things you think were missing in your life are exactly what you need in order to do it. There's no mistakes in what's happening. And don't let some psychobabble bullshit from some psychologist tell you you were abandoned or you're this. Don't put labels on yourself. Ask yourself how, no matter what happened in your life, how is it helping you get what you want? How is it helping you fulfill your highest value? Otherwise, you'll put labels on yourself. You'll blame something. You'll say, I didn't have this and so-and-so did this to me. Don't dissociate your life, disempower your life and look outside, look inside. You have the capacity to do it. Epictetus said that there is first people blame others, then they blame themselves, and then they finally realize there's nothing to blame. There's simply all the magnificent experiences in their life that are actually trying to help you get authentic. And if you ask how is whatever's happening in life helping you get there, you'll expedite a faster growth process of, of mastery. So I wanted to take this time to go through that because the hierarchy of your values dictates your destiny. And, and uh, you have a unique set of priorities. There's no one out there that has the same ones. The world has a full spectrum of all the values. None of them are right. There's no right universal value system out there. They've been looking for that. Camus and many others have all gone out there. There's no universal mountain. They all went out there looking for that. It doesn't exist. Everybody serves. Every value system serves. Even the ones that you think are villainous and evil and everything else are part of the perfection of the planet because they would have gone extinct if they didn't serve. Just because human beings in their moralistic hypocrisies can't see it is because they didn't look. They wanna stay in their high tower of that social pious perspective and not take a time to look at how everything is part of the equation. If you wanna get past that, if you wanna learn how to take no matter what happens in your life and use it to your advantage, come to the Breakthrough Experience so I can show you how to do that because it's a mind blowing to know the liberation that it comes when you get finally to realize that what's happening in your life is on the way, not in the way. And it's there to help you fulfill your highest value, to be authentic, to be inspired, and to make a contribution on the planet. So I just want to take the time to go through that and talk about the, the significance of the values in your life and remind you of that. No matter how many times you heard it, probably wise to hear it again, because it makes a difference. The reason I do that every friggin' day of my life, talk about values, is because it's the thing that made the biggest difference in my own life and other people's lives, thousands of people's lives that have taken the breakthrough experience and done the values determination and read the values factor book and went on and did something by priority. I have not heard anybody that's started to go that path and live by priority that didn't say thank you. So if you wanna have a turnaround in your life and a turn on in life, find out what your highest values, go online and do it and um, get the values factor book, come to the break experience, do something and let's get moving. Let's focus on, let's not wallow around and be pity party, trauma, drama and, you know, let, let's not just run our story and be our victim of our history. Let's become master of our destiny. That's what you're here for. So to help you do that, I wanna share that there's a little gift I wanna give you. And it's a complimentary gift that I know. It's a presentation I gave at a, at a, a um, planetarium in South Africa called Awakening Your Astronomical Vision. I want you to have this because I want you to realize that you have a vast vision inside you that's capable of doing something extraordinary and you may not have gotten it to the surface and seen it for yourself. If you want to expand your vision, want to know how to wake up and, and broaden your horizons, make a bigger difference and do something even greater in your life. This is a live presentation I did to a group of executives that were leaders and I guarantee you it's an inspiring piece. It was done in a planetarium. It's, it's really about you living authentically, building momentum, creating a legacy, leaving a mark, doing something extraordinary. And all you have to do is go to demartini.fm 
slash gift. Get that. You'll say thank you. Listen to it about six or seven times. I guarantee you it's going to make you think outside the box, it's going to give you some incentive and inspiration and vitality to go out and do something even more. Whatever it may be, if you're sitting on a plateau or a hump and you're holding yourself back, just listen to it a few times, I promise you, and make it to the breakthrough experience somewhere along the line if you haven't been, because I know you can't sit in front of me for 24 hours without having something happen. So this is Dr. Demartini. Um, thanks for being with me today. Please take advantage of the gift to ask, take your, ask, awakening your astronomical vision. Again, Demartini um, gift slash ink. And um, I look forward to seeing you at the next presentation. Have a super day. Prioritize your day. Fill your day with priorities today. Don't let anybody on the outside interfere with what's the dream on the inside. Go for it. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.